Hey everybody, it's me Margaret with a preemie hat tutorial today. This is called the Quick Color Band Preemie Beanie. It's a pattern that I did ages ago. It's been on my blog, but I've never had a tutorial. And it's perfect for beginners. You can download a copy of the pattern on my blog if you don't need a tutorial. And also, during this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching pattern reading as we read along and create the hat together. So let's take a look at it and see what we need to get started. Now, basically, any yarn will do because preemies come in a huge variety of sizes. But for this purpose, let's start with maybe one of these suggested hooks right here and two colors of worsted white yarn. And when I, I'm not being specific here because no matter what you use with this pattern, you're going to end up with a preemie size. Just to give you a little background on preemies, they can range hugely in size. For example, um, at 11 weeks, it might be 2.5 inches head circumference. That's tiny. And at 38 weeks, they might be 12.75 inches at head circumference. So the great thing about this pattern is that just by varying your yarn choice and your hook size, you can end up with different size preemie hats. These two are worsted weight yarns, Vanish Choice and Karen Simply Soft. This is heavier worsted weight. This is a lighter worsted weight. I did change the hook sizes. I used a five millimeter H hook with this. And with this one, I used a G four millimeter with that yarn and then with this one I used a sport weight yarn and a 3.5 millimeter or an e-hook to get a micro preemie and yes there are babies that this fits these hats are great for your open skeins or even scraps they use very little yarn I'm going to be using Vanna's Choice today in this color aqua marine and for the color band I'll use this Vanna's Choice in the color linen I'll also be using a five millimeter hook, which is known as an H hook, if you're more familiar with the letters. Down at the bottom here is your abbreviation key, and these are the only stitches you'll need to do this hat. Chain stitches, slip stitches, and double crochet. Learning to read a pattern opens a whole world of opportunity to you. But when I first looked at patterns, I thought, gosh, that looks a lot like algebra, and it scared me to death. But it's really not so difficult if you break it into steps. Each round is a series of steps. And what I do is color code my steps, or at least when I was first learning, I did. And that would help me make sure that I completed each thing that it was asking me to do before I proceeded to the second round. So here you can see I've got green and purple and pink. Anyway, you can look at it very quickly and see one, two, three, four, five different steps that we do. Just complete each one in the order that it's given and poof, you've read a pattern. So let's take a look at the first step. With color A, chain four. Now color A will be what you start with. Since we're doing top-down construction, we're gonna start with our main color. So you decide which, what, which one that is for you. For me, it's gonna be this aqua marine color that I have right here. So it says with color A, chain four, and join with a slip stitch to form a ring. Or, if you know what magic circle is, go ahead and do that. But today, I'm talking strictly to beginners, and we're going to do it the very basic beginner way. And that's to chain four, join with a slip stitch to form a ring. Now, many crochet projects start with a slip knot, and in this case, we're going to do that. A slip knot can be made a number of ways. I go around my two fingers like that, and then I go over twice. One, two. When I put my crochet hook in there, I've got a slip knot right there. So our instruction said to chain four, one, two, three, four, and then to join to form a ring. And the way you do that is you insert into that first chain, if you see right there, and then yarn over and pull through both of them for a slip stitch. Boom. Okay, where is the ring? <laughs> you have to kind of pull it apart to see it. And it is right there. So let's check our pattern for the next step. It says chain three, which will count as a double crochet, and we'll put 11 double crochet into the ring. All right, we can remember those two steps. So here we are. 
make sure we have our working yarn and not the tail. We chain three. One, two, three. This is a pretend double crochet. Whenever we start our stitches, we always start at the top of a previous stitch. So we have to get up to the top like that, and that's the way you do it. Okie dokie. It said to put 11 double crochet into this ring. Okay, the ring is actually right there. The slip knot kind of opens up and that confuses you. That's, that's not where you're going. You're going into the center of the ring of chains. Okay, so to do a double crochet, we yarn over, we put it into the center of the ring, we yarn over and pull up a loop. We yarn over, we pull through two, we yarn over, we pull through the last two. That's a double crochet. So we've done one of those. We yarn over, insert into the hole, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we've done two. So we'll continue putting our double crochet into the ring of chains until we have a total of 11 double crochet plus our pretend one, that chain three. So continue doing this until you can count a total of 12. And I'll meet you right back. All right, so I've got one more stitch to do, so yours should look something like this. And I'll put that last double crochet in that center of the ring, like that. Now I have to count our work. So turn it over on the side like a wheel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is the top of our chain three. See it? One, two, and three, right there. So now we've done twelve. Let's check our pattern. So we've done these steps. We put 11 double crochet into the ring. Now we join with a slip stitch into the third chain at the beginning of the round. And when we finish, see this in parentheses? When we finish, we know we should have a total of 12 stitches. So what does that look like? All right, we know we're going into the top of this chain three, which would be this one right here. And there's lots of ways to do this. Some people just, you know, stick it right in the middle of it like that. But when you do it, you kind of have this line right there. And for some reason that bugs me. So I want it to sit up top the way all these other stitches are doing. You see how they're lining the edge of our wheel? That's what I want it to do. So sometimes I have to use the hook like that to grab the front leg and then I stick use the point to stick it through the other leg. It looks like that. And then a slip stitch, of course, is just to yarn over and then pull through everything. So there you go. Now, there's something very important we need to address. And this is a common mistake for so many crocheters. What we just did was we joined two stitches, okay? But they still look kind of like two stitches. But because they're joined, it's like they're married, and we call them one. Let's watch this little excerpt from another video where I use two colors. So let's pretend our, our instruction said to double crochet, 12 double crochet in the center and join with a slip stitch. So we did that, and now we join with a slip stitch to the first stitch. Boom, no problem. But I want you to look closely at what's happening. Think of joining as marriage, okay? The cranberry stitch is marrying the gray stitch right here. Let's look at their wedding again. So we have two stitches that become one in holy matrimony. Okay? So now, think of, thinking of this as one stitch, it looks like it's got two parts, right? We often get confused and think of these as two separate stitches because they sort of pull apart. But that's not the case. They're one. So even though our hat is only one color, the principle remains the same. If you want to see that previous video in its entirety, I'll put the link below. So let's continue on with the pattern. So I've color-coded round two. We've got one, two, three, four steps in round two. 
So let's break them down. The first one, chain three, that's going to count as a double crochet. That's our pretend one again. And we're going to double crochet, do one, one double crochet in the same stitch. Hmm, now let's just, just do those two and see what that looks like. All right, so here we have our work. We're going to chain three, one, two, three. And then we're going to put a double crochet in the same stitch. Now, just what we learned, we've got two partners that have joined to make one stitch right here. So at the base, we'll need to place that double crochet. Well, this would be the base of this joined stitch, right? So let's yarn over, put our double crochet right in this base right here, like that. So now we technically have two stitches in the same stitch, don't we? We have that pretend one and we have the double crochet. Okay, good for us. Let's see what's next. Two double crochet in each stitch to the end. And then we join with a slip stitch into the third chain at the beginning of the round like we did before. So two double crochet in each stitch to the end. So we've just completed. So you can move things around so you can see. We put it in the base. It's right in this stitch. So our next stitch is right here beside it. So we double crochet in there. That's one stitch. And then we do another one in that same stitch right beside it. So see what you've done? You've got two in this joined stitch. One, two. And we have two in the stitch right beside it. So we keep going. What we're doing is making an increase round. Now in this case, we're doing two stitches in every stitch that we have. So we're doubling the amount of stitches that we have in our circle. We had 12. When we finish, we should have 24. So I'll leave you to finish this task and I'll meet you back before the join. So I'll have my last stitch to insert the two double crochet. And you can see what's going on there. There's the last stitch. This was the partner of the join, remember? But we've already addressed that one, so we only have this one to do. So there's the first one in that stitch, and here's the second one in that stitch. Good. All right, now when we finish, we're supposed to join to the, to the top of the chain three, which happens to be right there. See, one, two, three chains. And you can do it however you like, but for some reason I just feel the need to get it under both of those legs. And that's the way I like to do it. Okay, so we've joined. How many stitches should we have over here? So you check your pattern and it says 24 stitches. So when you count, if you don't have 24 stitches, then just rip it back and fix it. Figure out what you did wrong. One of the ways you can double check your work is just to pull your work apart like this to make sure that you've got two in that stitch and you didn't inadvertently put three or just one because that could really throw you off. And of course, another one of the common mistakes is counting that joined stitch as an additional one, and we know it's not. All right, so I'm putting this back together, and let's see what we do for round three. All right, we got a new pattern reading skill to learn in round three. Well, first of all, this is the same. Chain three, because it counts as one double crochet, and then do two double crochet in the next stitch. Let's just do this and get it out of the way. Chain three and two double crochet in the next stitch. We know exactly what we're doing with this. Two, three. Okay, here is that stitch we're working in, the joined stitch. So the next stitch would be this one. So let's do two in the one beside it. Note that it did not tell us to do it into the same stitch. It said to do it in the next stitch. Okie dokie. So we've got that done. So we look back at this pattern and we see asterisks that say one double crochet in the next stitch and two double crochet in the next stitch. 
repeat between the asterisks to the end. All that I've underlined in pink because it's kind of one collection of, of activities. Okay, so we go one, then two, one, then two. So it'll look something like this, repeating till the end. Here's the next stitch. So we go one, and then in this stitch we're going to do two. So that's one double crochet, and then in the same stitch, two double crochet. See how we've got one, then two? Now let's do it again. One in the next stitch, followed by two in this stitch. There's the first one, and in the same stitch is the second one. So you can see, let go, you can see our, we started pretty much the same way. That's one in this stitch, and then in the next stitch we did two. One, then two. One, then two. And you finish that pattern all the way to the end, and I'll meet you back around for the join. So I'm coming back around to my last collection of stitches here. So I do one in this one, and two in that last stitch, remembering that this one is part of the first joined stitch. So one and two. And then the instructions were to join at the top of the chain three. So one, two, three. That would be this one. So yarn over and pull through both. So there's the join and there's the end of round three. So you'll want to check to make sure that after you completed round three you had 36 stitches and if not go back and see what you did wrong. Alright, so here we're beginning round four. One, two, three things we have to do and we're still going to have 36 stitches when we finish. So that means that this is not an increase round. So let's see what we do. We do that chain three and I'm just assuming you know that it counts as a double crochet at this point. And then look between the asterisks. This was our repeat. Repeat until the end. We just do one double crochet in every stitch around. Well, that's pretty easy. Chain three and then one double crochet in every stitch around. And then we join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three as we always do. So that looks like this. The chain three fake double crochet that starts us off. Okay, here it is in its joined stitches. So this one would be the next stitch. Not here, but here. And we put one double crochet in each previous stitch all the way around. And when you finish, you should have 36. So I'll meet you back at the join. So I've got one more stitch. See, I've completed this one. And there's that first, the first join right there. So I'll put that last one in. And then I join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three, which is right there. Now you'll notice it starts to curve. Okay, that's exactly what's supposed to happen. Your first row after the increases will start to form the sides of your hat. Round five gives us pretty much the exact same thing we did the last time, but we're going to do it with color B. So with color B, chain three, counts as double crochet, one double crochet in every stitch around. And then we join with a slip stitch. So it's the same thing, we just get our new color. So how do we do that? Lay your new color over your hook and then pull it through. And all that is is attaching it, okay? So now we chain three. One, two, three. And if you notice that this thing, the blue right here, is starting to show, just reach back here and yank it. And when you do, it looks like you're planting your new color in, like that. All right, so we did the chain three right there in the join. Let's see, these are the two parts of the join, this part and this part. So here's the next stitch. Yarn over, 
pull through, yada, 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 you know how to do that. And we continue all the way around just as we did before, but with our new color. And we'll even join the exact same into the top of the new color, so I'll meet you back around. So I have my last double crochet to put right there. And the instructions said to join at the top of the chain. But look, this is getting kind of loosey-goosey. But I have control over it back here. If I need to hide the blue, no, my blue looks good. But if I need to, I would tug on that aquamarine. But this chain right here, the bottom chain, look, looks a little bit loose. So I can just pull on it a little bit back there. That's better. Okay, so I'm um, one, two, three. I'm joining in the top of the chain. Three. Like that. Oops, look, that's the tail. I don't want the tail. I want to make sure I got the working yarn to do the join. All right, now, just so we can see where we are, let's look at a regular hat. We start here and we're working this direction. So, so far we've accomplished this much of the hat and this first row of contrasting color right there. So now look what we're about to do. This, what would you call it, lace row right here. So this is going to be quite different from what we've been doing. So let's check the pattern. All right, for round six, this is going to be very different. With color A, we're back to our original color, we're going to chain four. And this is going to count as one double crochet and a chain one. Now that doesn't make sense just yet because we haven't read the rest of the line. Then after we do the chain four, we're going to skip a stitch. And then we'll do this repeating part. Okay, so let's make sure we know we're going to color A, chain four, we're going to skip a stitch and put one double crochet in the next stitch and a chain one, skip a stitch. One double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, skip a stitch. And we're gonna keep doing that until we get to the end. So let's stop right there. Let's see what that looks like. So with color A, make sure you get your working yarn of color A. We didn't cut it, it's still there. We just bring it up. Let's go ahead and attach it. And I want to hide that other color with the, right, that chain right there. So I'm pulling on my working yarn, and there it goes down. It might wiggle up again, but we remember we have total control over that, and we can wiggle it down, pull it down. All right, so we're chaining four. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to skip a stitch. That's this one. And we're going to double crochet in this one. And this is what we repeat all the way around. Chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet in this one. Double crochet, end with a chain one. Skip a stitch, double crochet, and end with a chain one. So now is it making sense why we did four? Because it counts as your double crochet, your pretend double crochet right here, and the chain one. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, all the way around as we remember to skip. Did I do my chain? Yes, I did. Okay, skip, double crochet, chain one. Okay, go ahead and do this double crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, all the way around. I'll meet you back. All right, so I just did my last stitch chain one. I'm going to skip this one, and I'm going to put the last stitch right here. And I'm going to chain one. And then let's go back to that pattern. For round six, it tells us to join with a slip stitch at the top of chain three and finish this slip stitch with color B. So that's different than what we've been doing. So we're just going to do a slip stitch, but we're going to finish it with the new color. So what does that look like? All right, here it is. This is our chain four. One, two, three, four. We want to do in the top of the chain three so that we will have that chain in between our stitches. 
And now let's move that aquamarine out of the way and pick up the working yarn of the other color and finish the slip stitch with it, like that. Now do you see how we've got this window pane looking thing going on? Just like in the other hat. So let's check the pattern. What's next? Okay, we're on the next to the last row, round seven. With color B, that we just attached, slip stitch into the chain one space. Hmm, that's different. And then chain three. So we're going to slip stitch into the chain one space and chain three. Let's stop right there and do that. All right, so here we are, like this. We haven't chained anything. We just merely finished off the last stitch, didn't we? So we're going to slip stitch into the chain one space like this. Put your hook into the chain one space, yarn over, pull it up, and finish it off, and you've just slip stitched into the chain one space. One more time. Boom. Okay. What did the pattern say? Now we're going to chain three. So there's our slip stitch. One, two, three. Okay, so essentially what we did was we moved our pretend double crochet over to be inside the space. Now let's see why we did that. Let's look at this hat because it's bigger. See what we've got here. The top of the hat, the top of the hat, that alternate color, the alternate color, the window pane commotion, the window pane commotion, and now look carefully at this. Do you see how we're putting two double crochet in each of the spaces? Okay, that's why we had to do that slip stitch, is so we could get over into the space. We did the slip stitch and chained three, and next we do one double crochet in that same chain one space. Okie dokie. So, yarn over in the same space, do your double crochet. Instead of inserting your hook into a stitch, you just insert into the space. And you can see what we got going on. There's two in the space. And just as you may have expected, what we're going to do next is two double crochet in the next chain one space and repeat the same thing all the way to the end. Okay, so two in every chain one space. Here's the chain one space. We go inside it to do that double crochet. Do it again. Let's see how we got two in each one. We're going to do that all the way around. One and two. Okay, I'll meet you back. Hey, I got back around to my last little window pane here. That's not the official name, by the way. I just totally made that up because that's what it looks like. And I need to sort of pull my stitch right there because it had grown out. See how that's pulling? So I'm going to make it the approximate size. And when we finish and sew in our ends, we won't have this problem. So I'll put my last two. Sewing in the ends will help secure it so that it will behave. You won't have that problem. And then we're going to join in the top of the chain three. One, two, three. So... I'm joining with a slip stitch like that. And you can see how it's two in every window pane. So we're on our last row, and it's a simple row. With color A, we do one double crochet in every stitch around. We join, and then we're through. We just sew in the ends. So just as we have done before, we get the linen color out of the way. Actually, we're finished with the linen color. So if you would like to cut your contrasting color, you can go ahead and do that now. Just get that out of the way. And now we pick up our color A, which in my case is the aqua, and attach it. And then chain three. One, two, three. And again, I can't stand that, so I like to pull.
pull on that to plant my stitch again my term and let's see this is the join one partner one partner so this is the next stitch right here right there so go all the way around with color A and I'll meet you back so I'm willing to bet that here I am on my last stitch and you finished yours without me. There we go. All right, so we sew in our ends. Go ahead and cut your yarn, pull it through, thread your tapestry needle. And you can really do this any old way. The way I like to do it is to create another stitch. I come from the back and you see this would be the next stitch right here, right? I go around it and then go back in right there and I essentially am creating another crochet stitch to lay up on the top. So it's kind of kind of invisible. And then you just hide your ends. I kind of just weave it all around in there. Sometimes I split it because that adds a little bit more friction. And there you go. Now you do these ends the same way, but let's look right here at the circle. I like to see which direction my yarn's coming from, which looks like it's going around here and coming out here. And then I feed it through the circle. Now, a lot of people don't like doing that chain four, which is, you know, basic crochet 101. A lot of people will do a magic loop. I have a modified version that acts as a magic loop that I use, but it's not really magic loop because I can't ever remember how to do magic loop, but it works the same. And the benefit is this can be completely closed, but this is fine, especially if you're going to put a pom-pom on top of your hat nobody would ever notice it okay I finished sewing everything in so I'll turn it right side out and there's your little hat perfect now some things you can learn in the future would be how to look at this back do you see how loose this is where the join was that's because a chain three is skinnier than a regular double crochet so you can learn how to make this seam more invisible by doing things like a standing double crochet or sometimes people use filler stitches. So I am considering talking about that here in the future, how to improve the, the look of this stuff in the back. You can also be on the hunt for a magic circle tutorial which makes this go away or look at any of my other tutorials to see my version which is a little bit simpler but achieves the same thing. But there you go. Thanks for watching. Bye.